Thank you for staying here. Um, I don't have anything really prepared for this talk. So it's going to be like everything more like live demo and showing some bunch of code. So this is me. I'm, my name is Gabriel. <coughs> and I wrote a blog post a few months ago and about error handling in HTTP4S using this fancy library called Meow MTL. So if you don't understand much of what I'm saying here, because I only have 20 minutes, uh, you can always come back to this blog post, check it out. Uh, I think quality is quite OK. I have it reviewed by Ross here. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's quality uh, is a guarantee of quality there. Um, so yeah, I'm just like, this is the library I'm going to be showing. It's called Meow MTL. It's basically next level MTL um, built on top of Cuts MTL and Cuts Effect, so it, it provides some a few bunch of instances, and it makes it really easy to work with the MTL, um, MTL style and tagless final in Scala. <coughs> so, I created this repository. If you want to follow follow along with the code, it's called Classy Optics. So all the code that I'm going to be showing now, it's here. I wrote it yesterday, <laughs> so <laughs> it's compiling. So I think. Uh, uh, so yeah, let's get started. Like. Uh, let's get started with this. I have um, have this this code here, and the idea, you know, like reading configuration, something very basic. Um, I created this bunch of uh, case classes here. I'm using the conf the pure config library to to read the configurations like this application conf. And the idea was that we can applicative ask is like the the MTL equivalent of like kind of like the monad reader, but it just like operates on the applicative side. And the idea is just like it can carry some context. It's like Glycely or like reader T, but on the empty level. So we can use it as an, as an MTL, uh, as a type class here, right? So we, we can define this bunch of programs here. I, I define this type aliases like to make the code more readable, but it's, you, you could just use applicative ask straight away here. But I think this, is, this makes the code like much more readable and much more easier to understand. <coughs> so. I have these three different programs here. This one has, all of them have a parametric f type type constructor. And it has this sync type classes from cats effects. And then has app config in this case. And I define just a, a method foo just to you know, show you how, how, how it works. But basically, we can, we can implicitly ask for, for this instance of a applicative ask of f and app config. We call ask, and we can just flat map and access the configuration, and just like printing print in line of the configuration, not doing much more. And I have two more similar programs, program two and program three, which they look exactly the same. The only difference is like the the the, the configuration is is a different type. So one has the app config, the other one HTTP server config, and and then the other one has a service config. So this makes it clear that you know, we have a really big configuration file in a case class data structure. We don't want to share the whole config to, you know, to every component in our application. So th this way, we can just ask for whatever we need, exactly what we need. Um, but there is an issue. Like, whenever we want to instantiate these this type classes, if we want to combine program one, program two, and program three, we're going to have uh, issues like with the, what is the instance? Well, how, can, how can we provide an instance for applicative ask of these three different types? Uh, we're going to have some kind of conflicts there. And one way like, to work with MTL type classes is just to use mono transformers, which is the way that I use it here. So in this case, I'm kind of cheating, because I'm, I'm using Clicy, which is the reader T of the three different types. And then my, my effect type is just IO, and I just run the effect with the with the configuration that I already loaded. So I, I'm kind of doing this manually. But if I try to compile, combine all these programs, it wouldn't compile because the, 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 the instance will not match. Like the, we have a, three different instances of the same type class, so we get, we get an, an error there. So how can, I think, I think it just, I can also run this just so you can see how, how it runs. Yeah, system one. Just try printing line of the configuration, basically reading with pure config. Um, so yeah, I was like kind of cheating in this case. So is there any way we can kind of like 
have a single instance of this applicative ask uh, and, and have it you know, accessible to app config, HTTP server config, and service config. Look, HTTP server and, and, and service config are just nested data structures of app config. So it means that we can probably access that, and, and that's what lenses do, or classy lenses like operate at the data structure level, at the type class level. So this is what this nice library called Meow MTL provides. So just going to comment this here. That's, that's the import that does all the magic. But basically, um, in this case, I'm just defining an instance of applicative ask for I.O. So it, normally, in Scala, you just write all the synthesis manually for performance reasons. You, so you just want to have a single type at the end of the world, which is either I.O. or task or whatever is your effect type. Like, normally, this is preferable for performance reasons. If you use um, monotransformers, transformers, they are terrible in Scala. It's super slow. So this is more recommendable to use. So in this case, our effect type is just, it's just I.O. So we are not using class three anymore. We don't have the reader T kind of like different instances. And we, have, we instantiate our three different programs with the, the same effect type. But if you go back to the definition of program one, program two, and program three, they require different instances of applicative ask, right? So this code here shouldn't compile because our F like only P1 will compile, which has the right instance, but the other two will complain, and we can we can we can verify that and try to compile that. Hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah. So P1 it was alright, no problems. And P2 and P3 is complaining because it doesn't have the right instance of applicative task. And this this is what this library does. So if I just go back here and uncomment this, this is like kind of black like magic. <laughs> Like import this, and what this library will do, well, we can try to compile it first. Call compile again, and now it passes, and we can even run this, this demo two. Cool, it works. And then how does it work? Well, uh, by importing this like com all like, all like this hierarchy underscore, it actually derives all these lenses for you. So we have this applicative ask of application config, I can go back to the definition, right? So we have app config, which has HTTP server config and service config. And if you, if you create this case class on your own, you say you have an app config, in order to access the, the inner data structures, like HTTP service and H, and you just like, you know, have to access the data structure. And that's what is kind of like zooming in into the data structure, or zooming out if you want to go back and forth. And this is what the concept of lenses are. And this is called classy lenses because it operates on, at the type class level. So what this library is going to do with this magic import is just going to derive all these lenses instances for you. All you have to do is just like parameterize your, <coughs> your programs with the different constraints of applicative ask. And the library will magically, uh, will magically derive the instances so you can zoom in. In, into these data structures, into the lenses at the, at the type class level. So I think that's, that's super amazing. So now that we define this, I'm going to go back and, and show a different, more interesting use case for this. It's like, this is a very interesting use case. Another one, it's something that I discovered that we could do uh, for HTTP4S. It's like, we have this. Um, algebra here. So basically, use your user interface, um, parameterize an arbitrary f, and we have some bunch of <coughs> user errors here. I'll, I'll explain later why it extends exception, but ignore that for now. And this is how you define uh, routes in HTTP4S, right? So. That this is the normal way. We have an instance. We, ha we require our parameterized f to be a sync, which is a type, a cuts effect type class, which allows us to um, defer uh, effects, side effects. So normally, sync extends um, monad error of f with the fixed type, which is throwable. Um, so that means that if you want to have a monad, another monad error instance here of our 
of our ADT type, it's going to get in conflict with these instances already in scope. So we can't do that. Um, so, but we, we can do this, this kind of stuff. We can just call our, our services and handle the, the errors manually one by one in, in the cases where we needed to handle the errors, right? So this is a common way, and it's like one of the ways uh, that most people do it, and, and that was the way that we were doing it before as well. Um, another interesting uh, way of handling errors is trying to leverage these MTL type classes and come up with a different way of seeing this. Say, OK, how we can you know, get around this constraint that we have this monad error of probable already in scope, but we want to handle errors of our spe specific ADT of errors. So come up with this way, such as an alternative. OK, e extract all this error handling in a different algebra. So we define this HTTP error handler of f in our user error, which is represents an ADT of errors. And we just handle errors at the roots level. Basically, we define all the roots, and we know that, that we need to handle this specific type of errors in these roots. And how does it look like? This is how error handle is defined. So you see the constraint and throwable here. This is a limitation, because uh, uh, cuts effect basically fixed the, the error type to, to throwable. So in order to get around that, we have to define that our error type has to, that's why we extend exception there, or throwable. Um, so yeah, so this is just a, 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 an util case, which is to, it's going to be generic and using it every time. But this is the, how the type class looks like. And this is how the instance looks like. So we define our, our instance for our a specific ADT error. In, in this case, we require our f to be a monad error of our specific error type. And so we don't have the constraint of sync here. So we don't, we don't have this conflict of instances, which is super cool. And we are leveraging the MTL, um, this library, meow MTL, to, to do the derivation of the instances for us. So the same way with applicative ask, we could derive like the, the, the lenses to access the, the, inner, the inner data type. We could zoom in. It does the same for the monad error as well. Because user error extends exception, which is a subtype of throwable. So it can figure it out for you. And that's amazing. I think we can get back here. If you add a new error to our ADT, we're going to get you know, a non-exhaustive pattern uh, matching there. So we're going to get compilers if we, if we, like, for example, if I just comment this, try to compile. I believe I should get a, an error there. Right? The match may not be exhaustive. So we gain again this, uh, this type safety again, once again. I know there, there's a few caveats with this, with this approach. And it's like we don't, we don't exactly, we don't have an association of, uh, of errors. Well, our user algebra can raise errors in the context of f, and we, we don't really know. So it requires some discipline from the programmer to say, OK, we have to kind of like mentalize that this is the HTTP error handler interface handles the user error, which our user algebra can raise. Uh, but there is no guarantee by the type system of that. So few other approaches, for example, using the, the bifunctor IO, which has a channel for error. But I think this was an, an interesting experiment. And, and uh, we've been using this, this in production as well. So uh, I think it, it pays off. It's, it's nice if you, if you have discipline in Scala. So just to wrap it up, I think this is uh, the server here, <coughs> how we start the, the Blaze Server Builder. And my type, my F type is IO. So that's, that's amazing. And I just define an implicit error handler as our user HTTP error handler. And I believe the import here, what's oh, just the import there? Yeah, so th this import here is what does all the magic again. It derives. It figures out that you know the monad error instance that you need when you create this new user HTTP error handler. We already have a user a monad error here of f and um, throwable. So it figures out that user error is a subtype, and it derives that instance for you. And it's magic, <laughs> and it works. So then, yeah, we can try to compile this. 
to compile. Oh, I didn't say the file probably. <coughs> uh, what was that file? Error handler. Oh. Oops. Don't even know. I should compile. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kind of like a hack. So I can start the HTTP server, and I'm not going to show it so much. But that's all I have. So yeah, I, I can take any questions if you have one. But uh, I, I don't want to delay more this talk, so the next talk can. Any questions? Oi, oh, thank you, then.